Avast! And so on. Welcome back, me hearties, as we are here to talk a little of the threats from beneath the deep. Specifically, we are here to talk about one of those destroyers known as the Aquatopillar. Why not start with the basics? And the Aquatopillar, well, they don't get much more basic than that little bastard. Sorry, excuse my language, I've lost so many crew to these Aquatopillars. Ah, it does make a gentleman captain lose his temper. And if there's one thing serving in the Royal Navy has taught me, it is that one must never lose one's temper, or one's crew loses their heads. And they lost not just their heads, but also their legs. Those aquatopillars can eat through many things. Perhaps to go back a little. The scientists, those boffins from around the globe, they've categorised aliens from the deep into five large groups. Destroyers, enslavers, invaders, primordials and spies. There are also terrestrial threats roving around, not just the communists, you also have some sympathisers that attempt to make peace with the aliens, something we will not do. And Aquatopillars, well, I doubt even the mad individuals behind the organisation known as FISH would attempt to make peace with the Aquatopillar. The Aquatopillar is a destroyer alien, and while I have served at sea and of course on land and have been able to observe that Aquatopillars behave differently on both, I can tell you that there is little so alarming as waking up in the night to find an Aquatopillar snuffling around at your toes. Why, just last month, I remember myself, my family, gaily splashing in the shallows off Weymouth. Yes, we were enjoying the rock pools, the warm water. At this time, we weren't aware of the sewage outlet just upstream. But, nevertheless, it felt warm, the sea smelt glorious, and it was a fine day. But that was the first time I encountered one of these creatures. We had been given the all-clear on Weymouth Coast, we had been told that there were no threats nearby, and so, as we are wont to do, we British, well, we like to triumph over adversity, and so, we all drove down to the coast and got straight into the water. Didn't matter that a week before there were Gilkin advancing up the coastline, no, no, they had all been extinguished, so now the water was ours again. So we splashed around, got our rubber rings out, our... <laughs> bathing suits, and a fun time was had by all, until the alarm went. Thankfully, one coastal guard was on a lookout, not for any living threat, but perhaps for any limbs of Gilkin washing up to shore, because it can put bathers off of their Sunday morning. The sight that beheld the coastal guard was in fact something considerably worse. The Aquatopillar. All twenty feet of it, snuffling and shuffling its way up the coast, like a pantomime donkey with too many parts, bristling with fine hairs, splotched with black puddles on its yellow carapace. Hundreds of tiny feet seemingly fighting against each other on which direction the Aquatopillar should head. All we knew was the Aquatopillar was getting closer and closer to a sleeping bather. This man, I would put him at no younger than seventy. He had probably fought in two wars, defended our bold nation against terrestrial foes, many and varied. Perhaps it is for the best that he did not wake. Or maybe he did wake, but by the time he opened his eyes it was too late. By that point he must have realised my head is somewhere it should not be. And whatever he thought to himself about where he may, may have been, I guarantee it did not smell good. It might have felt warm, but eventually he was asphyxiated. It was all I could do to save my own family, and other bathers, of course. We, we fled at the time. I was not armed. Uh, it is not really a thing in Britain to go around armed, especially when on one's holiday. And so we advanced up the coastline. We, we scaled the cliff using the handly cut stairs. 
hoping that this Aquatopilla could not follow us. And I have heard since this time that Aquatopillas range from anything from 10 feet in length to 30 feet in length, but what I do know is that they cannot be reasoned with. All we could do was flee and wait for the proper authorities to come. But where were the proper authorities? There lies the question. All that arrived was a team of scientists and some journalists who felt obliged to interview the Aquatopilla. Clearly he did not know that the Aquatopilla is not one for talking. The journalist approached far too close. I have to hand him to him his bravery was admirable. I had to cover little Timmy's eyes as the journalist put his microphone to the Aquatopilla's maw and was absorbed in up to the elbow. It was all the scientists could do to try and wrench him free, and by the time he had, I believe uh, his arm was as good as shaved. The journalist fled. This was not something he was prepared for. Thankfully, there was a bold sailor nearby, a, a fisherman such as I was at one point before I became a resource to the government in this kind of fashion, giving you these little lectures before your movie starts in the theatre. Well, a fisherman landed at the beach. He had seen everything that was going on. He cast his net over the Aquatopillar, and that sent it into quite a state. You see the Aquatopillars, and you do not believe they can move fast. And they can't. They can't. Uh, it uh, was writhing and wriggling quite aimlessly. It was a bit futile, a bit pathetic. It was not the... Uh, heroic battle of man versus beast that we were perhaps hoping for. But then it managed to get into the water, just a tad. And as soon as it entered the water, it sped through and into the waves. It was quite a sight, I can tell you. We didn't expect it. The scientists were there, busy jotting down, clearly planning a counter-attack. But their, the smiles on their faces weren't what I would consider healthy. We should be trying to put these creatures down, not put them in our logbooks. So, it was down to the fisherman, a man who you, of course, now know as Henry. Henry. Never was there a bolder fisherman. He was a good friend of mine. We served together in the war, on the same ship. We knew each other very well, Henry and I, as only two sailors can. And, needless to say, he pursued the Aquatopilla in his boat. It was just a rowing boat, you know, nothing major, nothing impressive. He had only wanted for a quiet life, old Henry. And he was quite the championship rower. I'm told he actually went to Oxford and was served in their boat team for a year. Either way, he rowed with all his might. He pulled those arms back, his biceps flexing in the sun, and I do believe he nearly caught up to the Aquatopilla, enough that he cast a line to try and snare it. And while Henry was a strong man, uh, thick of arm, the Aquatopilla was, as already mentioned, 20 feet long, quite bulbous itself. Whether Henry could support its weight, I doubt his fishing rod could. The Aquatopilla, well, uncannily, it took the bait and the hook, and then it started gobbling its way up the line. Henry, paralysed perhaps with fear, but as we later found out, paralysed because the Aquatopilla had shot some of its spine-like hairs into him, with which it paralyses its prey, could do nothing as the Aquatopilla bounded onto his boat. Well, that's what set me into action, ladies, gentlemen. I could not see my friend die in this fashion. There were many ways I would see him die, but not this. I let my children go. I bounded down those steps in the cliff face, just as the Aquatopilla was rearing up to devour Henry. I jumped into the sea, I swam for all my might. Somehow it was as if the Aquatopilla was frozen in place, it, it never quite descended in time uh, to, to get its lips around Henry's head. But by the time I arrived it was nearly there, it was an inch away. I toppled the boat. 
the Aquata Pillar fell out. I was now in danger as well, but my imperative was to rescue Henry and paddle back to shore. For some reason, the Aquata Pillar did not follow. And this leads me just to believe the Aquatopilla, whilst voracious in hunger, has a very small stomach, because after it had devoured that elderly bather, maybe, just maybe, it had everything it needed. Maybe it was just acting in self-defense when Henry went for it with the line. I cannot say, because the Aquatopilla did not stick around to answer my questions. I did bring Henry back, and this was not where he died. But he will die in one of these tales. You'll have to wait and see to find out where. But that's not where we terminate this. You should know a few things about the Aquatopillars. If you see them approaching on the beach, simply run. They're not that fast. Uh, they shouldn't be that terrifying. If, however, you are at sea and there are aquatopillars writhing and wriggling through the water, that's when you've got problems, because they're heavy enough to topple a small vessel, and they're damn fast. What would I recommend? The harpoon gun is uh, your friend in a case like this. Their political alignment? Not certain. They don't seem to ha possess the kind of thought that... The, some of the other, their alien brethren, do, uh, but I would probably put these in the communist camp of aliens. After all, they always seem to possess a singular thought, and that's just devour, devour, devour. And who does that remind you of but our Soviet cousins? If you see an Aquatopilla, and you are not prepared to defend yourself, you get out of there as quickly as you can. Because I may not be there to save you. Thank you for watching.